Okay. You can see my screen okay? Great. Um, I thought we might do this one because I actually know what it is. Um, and it's to do with functions. Assuming I got them the right way around, I always forget which triangle is which. Um, one question is, how do I write it? Upside down triangle. Mm. Do you see it? Yeah. G. Help. Oh, that's odd. Uh, you haven't turned on your keyboard. I guess so. Yeah, I didn't even know Alt G was bound to something. Oh, it's Google. <laughs> Google Drive seems to have stolen that hot. Wait, that's Control Alt G. Well, I don't want a hotkey anyway. Save. Okay. There we go. Why do I keep getting this? My help now, I wonder. How strange. No big deal. All right, upside down triangle. Actually, that might only be in here. Um, it's for recursion. So maybe we'll try APL wiki then. Okay, it's called del. Oh, reverting, resembling an inverted delta, represented by the nabla. Okay, so we'll call it del slash nabla. It's used for recursion. Um, you'd think there'd be something about recursion in here. Oh, here we are. Let's go to this one. Okay, so there's actually a couple of things to note here. Because um, we haven't done guard expressions either. So let's do that first, guard expressions. Okay. Um, <laughs> how do we write diamond? Um, back tick. Oh, back, back tick. Back tick. Or alt back tick with my keyboard. Okay. So 
factorial is to find such a factorial of omega equals factorial of omega minus one. Um, and so here's an example of a factorial if we wanted to write it ourselves. And the thing that's new here is this thing here, it's called a guard expression. And it checks whether this is true. And if it is, then it exits with this return value. Um, so in this case, factorial of five, this is not true. So then this is a statement separator. So instead it's gonna return five times factorial of four. And then factorial of four will do the same thing. It'll be four times factorial three and so forth until it gets to factorial of one. And this will be true. So that's our base case, it will return one. And that's why we get this. One thing I'm curious about is can you, no, you can't. Uh, I think you, you want to use each that you may yeah. make it work. Yeah. 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 Probably if there's some way to do this as a tacit function, maybe we wouldn't have the problem. I'm not sure. Okay. So does that make sense for guard expressions? Um, so what if we wanted to define it and use it? So if we wanted to define factorial and then immediately use it, that's not gonna work because this function doesn't have a name. So you need to be able to refer to the current function. So del simply refers to the current function. So that means call myself. Does that make sense? But that is different from the selfie, isn't it? Sorry? Uh, different. different from the selfie, yes. So selfie, uh, selfie simply um, f uh, uh, selfie x simply equals x f x. For example, um, times, oops, times selfie three equals three times three. So this line is identical to this line. So this is a function. So we're calling it with, let's start by calling it with uh, two. Okay, so calling this function with two, I make it equals two. It's not less than or equal to one, so skip this. So it's equal to two times the current function of one. This is the current function, so then it goes to do this with one. Uh, yes, that is less than or equal to one, so it returns one. So now we've got, this is del of one is one times two equals two. So it's exactly the same as the factorial one. I've just replaced the word fact with del. In, um, in Python, for example, if you want to create, create a recursive function, you can't create a recursive lambda. There's no way for a lambda to call itself. Um, but in APL, you can create an anonymous recursive function. Does that make sense? Um, so we could um, also, of course, define this as fact if we wanted to. Like, we don't have to make it anonymous, it would still work fine. Okay. All right.
Uh, done. All right, anyone you suggest we do next or should we just randomly pick something? I think maybe it can go through all the boxes together. Okay. Do you have any sense of what the boxes are vaguely about? Nope. Okay. The second one. The second one? Yeah. I think that so, is the curve. Sorry? I think that is the, the pin out, the second one. So, but the rest, I don't know. Is that this quad? Yeah. Cool. Oh, okay. Well, we, we've already done quad. Okay, so quad with a little doobie at the top. I'm guessing they don't have something called quad with doobie at top. But... Let's see. Hmm. I don't see it. Maybe we'll search the wiki or something. It's purple rather than blue, which makes me suspicious. Maybe it's not a thing. Quote quad. Oh, that's the name of a newsletter. <laughs> it's named after the glyph quote quad, which can be used to print text. Oh, okay. So quad is standard output and quote quad is standard input. I wonder how one would use that in APL. Probably quite useful. Oh, hi, Molly. Oh. oh, hello. Yeah, Jupyter input input through through it is not supported. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but we could do a, a like get something from stood it in and a script or something. Yeah, I, I think if we did a script, it would be supported. Mm. Yeah. Here, they're just using it as a normal variable, I guess, are they? It's the array is displayed without the line ending. Oh. That's interesting. Neat. So this is called quote quad. And it's written left curly. Quote, quad. So, print without carriage return. Wonder if this is going to work. Yep. Okay. Fine.
All right, I'll just copy this then. So basically, even though it's not gonna work, I would do this. Okay, no worries. Right. What about this one? Quote, uh, box with two dots. A variant operator. What on earth does that mean? Okay. Doesn't seem like this is used for normal APL. So probably not really part of our notation. Although I guess it's useful to know what it's talking about. Um, okay. So I think knowing how to use JSON is nice. How do we create this character matrix? Um, Okay. So this is, I guess we could just go one, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five. Oh, wait, do we use double quotes or single quotes? We use single quotes. Okay. Okay, so if we did um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So four rows of six columns, J. I slightly got it wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a space. Oh, well, Jeremy, I saw Adam mentioned using the um, um, square bracket and then D the input for multi line, but I haven't tried in Jupyter. Maybe we can try. I put oh, it hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm not quite sure. Uh, let, me, let me come back to you. Um, Oh, I see that one's got a comma and that one doesn't. Okay. So we can do six. And then you can tell me about this multi-line idea. Okay. Right. Okay, sorry, Serata. What can no, I do? Okay. Um, I put it in the chat. Um, maybe you can copy um at the uh at the top of the multi-line. Um, oh, chat. Uh, 
Oh, yes. Right, right. So, okay. Yeah, and do you think I might then be able to like do yes. something? Try. Oh. <laughs> Worth a try. <Yep. laughs> okay. Okay. So we can do JSON. to a matrix. It's funny they're using this rather than the usual quad gets thing, I think. Uh, weird font issue, never mind. Um, okay. Um, all right, so um, how do we write this thing? It's question mark. And what's the name of the symbol? It's just called variant, is it? All right, so if we search for JSON, oops. These are called system functions. And so we could use quad gets here. Um, quad, what keyboard shortcut is quad? A tick, back tick, 
No, that's diamond. L. L. How did I forget that? All right. Cool. We're definitely getting to some of the weird ones, huh? Okay, so that's that one. Quad diamond. Oh, this is stencil. Yes. I think this is what we can use for like convolutions and stuff. Okay, and how do we write that? Might be percent. Oh, hi, Isaac. Hey, it's working on fast kaggle and I totally lost track in the last couple hours, so. <laughs> fast kaggle can do that to people. I looked up and I was like, oh, it's halfway through the session, shoot. Percent is wrong. Oh yeah, no, that's part of our. No, none of those. Uh, Honestly, you haven't missed much, Isaac. We've only been doing weird ones. Squiggly. Squiggly, Tilda. <laughs> Tilda. Squiggly. And an operator. Yes, it does sound a lot convolution, a lot like a convolution. It's going to be applied to possibly overlapping rectangular views of the right. Yes, also for cellular automata. Goes back to a dictionary of APL, which we saw the other day. Okay, so we're going to pass it two rows. The first row is the dimensions of the rectangles, and the second is the movement, which I guess is like the stride. Okay, this is the rank, tally row is rank. The right argument has, our upper end has rank Y columns. Okay, so you're gonna be saying for each axis, um, what's the kernel size and stride? As you can use fewer, we'll worry about that special case later. Okay, stride is defaults to one. Okay, so this is starting. Okay, this looks like a good way to do it. Okay, so we've started with um, a three by four matrix, the numbers from one to 12. 
and the function we're doing is, this is enclosed, isn't it? Uh, yes. Great. Okay. I'm confused as to why they used a defund for it. interesting. What's going on with the defund? Um, it's making, it's ensuring it's monadic, I guess is what it's doing. It just seems like a really clunky way to do that. Yeah, let's come back to that. I mean, it should know it's monadic anyway. There's there's nothing on its left. Well, maybe stencil put something on its left. Um, Um, okay, just a tick. I gotta go check on my daughter. All right. You guys solved it now? Uh, without the nest, it does it keep the shape of the um, input. So like it becomes kind of a list. I don't know. That's all I found so far. Can we add the assignment to the materialize, um, you know, both with the defund and then without? So if we do the left arrow to materialize um, oh, um, right before the gets? stencil and then, yeah. Sure. Um, quad gets. I don't think I know these parentheses, but. I guess I, I meant um, right bef between the defund and the stencil. So then we can okay. see what is going into the function. And then if we okay. take away the defund, we can see what's going into the enclosed. Okay. Um, I don't know if that makes sense though. I'm not sure if it does, right? Because the thing on the left of a stencil is the function. Oh, that's call, right. Which is a defund. And we do kind of know what it is because we can see it's been printed. Um, oh, you know what we could do is we could do uh, alpha comma, uh, whoa, what is that? Uh, I've got something else running. Power toys. Let's try this. Hmm. <laughs> oh, it's that thing. Screenshot program. Uh, close that too. Okay. Um, Can we use the statement separator to enclose omega and material and print alpha, or do two statements in that defund? Okay. Um, yes, so we are getting alphas, which presumably this documentation will tell us.
So F F is invoked dyadically and the vector left argument indicates the number of fill elements. That's useful. Okay, so you can see that for this first one, we've got fills along the top and left, hence the one one. And then for the next one, we've got a fill along the top only, hence the one zero. And in the fourth one, yes, it's the top right, hence one negative one. Okay. Um, cool. I'm still trying to think of the convenient, you know, the tacity way to just turn something into a monadic function. Composition. Ah, we could do a top. Where um, okay. Top is J. Yeah, it's kind of like a big jot. Makes sense. And then right tack. Oh, have I got a pointer in the wrong direction? Oh, I see. That's right, Tech. There we go. So that's, first of all, applies this function to alpha and omega. And then it applies this function, which is obviously much uglier than the defund version they've already got. Okay, so um, this is getting a three by three section of this array and passing it to this function. And so if we wanted a stride two version of that, we could say, create something um, which would be a two by two matrix where we're doing a three by three convolution with a two by two stride. Yep. That's cool.
if there's some way to get nice um, images and stuff onto APL Jupyter Notebooks, it would be cool to do like just a simple Gaussian blur kernel or something to display this, if anybody feels like trying that out. Yeah, images are, um, I think the, the way that was recommended to get images in is to convert your images beforehand to bitmaps and then load it in. Okay. Um, That's there's option. kind of a, um, there's a uh, section on images in the, um, the mastering dialogue APL PDF that I haven't mm -hmm. gone through yet, but I'm um, going to look there, but. Whoa, it, JPEG, it seems, zero results. That's not good. <laughs> Yeah, kind of everyone at PNG is the same, but wow. pretty much. Um, There's a make PNG. There's a bitmap. Oh, no, you can use GIF or PNG. Okay, well, I never got the PNGs working right, but. Um, Okay. Yeah, it seems like there's there's a lot of um, it's been several projects where people do like neural nets on images uh, using Minst, um, and um, I, I'm not completely sure the format that they're in. They're behind a Jan Lacun um, Jan Lacun's website, but it's password okay. protected, so I can't actually see the data set. But oh, weird. Um, Presumably, we could ask if he's willing to share what that data set is at some point. But it, it looks like it's just minced in some format. Hmm. Yeah, maybe you should send him a message and ask. OK. Um, anything else we need to know about Stencil? Oh, here we go. So this is doing both. This is actually probably better. Has anybody, I presume there's an APL stencil version of Game of Life. There you go. Game of life. Nifty. Oh, Adam's 17 character solution. Cool. So here's our three by three neighborhood. And here is the count. Cool. All right. Um, does this like, uh, it's not quite linear algebra, just not quite sure where to put this. But now I guess we'll call it other. <laughs> Other glyphs, other function, other operators. Okay. All right. Now, what on earth are these things? One of those hydrants is an execute statement. 
think that's the first one, second one, third one. I think the second one is I beam. Ah, experimental stuff. Can't imagine that's going to come up too often, so we can definitely put that in the weird special bit. I think the triangle um, is self-reference for recursion uh we've already done that um, oh okay yeah we did that a little bit earlier just before you arrived i guess okay do any of them look interesting I see, here's execute expression. Exactly as it would be executed by the monadic execute primitive function. Oh, I see. Syntax coloring. Well, all kinds of stuff. Probability distributions at the bottom. Oh, oh, and an SVD. I started reading from the bottom up. So. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea. That way we're not overlapping. Not available on Mac. Well, I'm not on my Mac, so that's OK. I wonder why it's not on Mac, though. That would be nice to have more officially available, wouldn't it? Chat wizard, oh god. Why do we use chart wizards? Such a weird thing to do in APL. SVD. As at August 2022, Services include SVD, probability, probability distributions, and much more. Okay, fine. So then this is going to be our execute expression thing, is it? Hydrant symbol? Yep. Cool. Working a different process. <laughs> Do you think it does or? Oh, no, sorry. There's another one that forks a new process. And... Oh, oh, wait. Did you move to the new, another? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, I moved to hydrant. Oh, I see. There's a, there's a fork thing in the um, IBM one, is there? Yeah, yeah, I, I was still reading through them. Sorry. No, no, that's good. Uh, can somebody tell me the keyboard shortcut for this one? Uh, hydrant, it's uh, the semicolon, I think, or, or colon. Okay.
Yep. Okay, that looks pretty straightforward. That's interesting. The execute expression seems to return the last thing. But it's printing the first thing. R is the result of the last executed sub expression. And the non shy results of all preceding expressions are displayed. Okay. So that's the opposite of if you don't use it, right? Sounds if you don't that use way. the hydrant. Right. Okay. Namespace. Oh, we haven't done namespaces. So. Okay. We have Thorn. Is that what this is? Yep. Okay, I'm going to put this one into the weird special symbol section. Okay. Thorn. Not upside down hydrant. That is what I've been calling it uh, until I just looked it up just the other day, just a few minutes ago. I mean. Okay, and how do I, I type it? That was not right. It's a single quote. Got it. Okay, so the only way you can tell these different is from the luck of the squiggly. I thought there's supposed to be dots between the four, five, and six to. That must be in a different well, uh, display format. Yeah, well, it's characters versus num numbers. NB depends on PP.
Yeah. Oh, okay. So I, th so I think it's converted it to a string of characters. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Text width with a number of decimal places. Okay. I wonder if there's a way to display the spaces. Okay, I put this in the weird lift section as well. Okay. All right, I wonder if we can finish these. What does at sign do? I think it replaces stuff. It means at. <laughs> at means at. If it's an operator. It's a dyadic operator. But it can create monadic and dyadic function. You can tell because of the curly brackets on the X. Okay, this is replacing two and four with zero. Oh, or you can replace it with a function call. That's neat. Okay, so this one's just replacing two or four with zero in iota five. And I'm guessing this is replacing two and four with times applied to the right hand side and 10. That's very cool. So the right upper end of identifies which items. Oh, and you can also use a function on the right hand side. That's neat. Okay, the left can be the array for replacement or the function to be applied. And the left argument is X. Cool. So this is out of five, replacing. Oh, okay. You can also. Replace like 
one and two with two and four. No, that didn't. One, two. Oh yeah, this is what we're replacing. Replacing two gets replaced with three and four gets replaced with one. Okay. Makes sense. Um, Okay, there's all kinds of weird indexing things that we haven't talked about. Choose indexing or reach indexing. Okay, so this is the monadic version of the function one. Replaced with reciprocal on positions two and four. Oh, I like this. Replace odd elements with zero. So two, there are two, modulo two, this basically means. What does this mean? Replace odd items with themselves reversed. I don't understand how that works. I can see what it's done, but it's not applying this to each element. That's clever, isn't it? It's actually applying it to the whole array and then deciding which elements to replace. So that's, um, that's quite clever. Five, three, one, two, four, six. Wow, nice. Um, okay, let's move this into the main operator section because it seems really useful. Oh, except we haven't done that one yet. All right, I guess we want them. Never mind. But I will move this section out of the way because it's less interesting. Okay, that's at. All right, right arrow. Okay, it's superseded by more modern control structures. So maybe we should not really spend much time on that. Put it in the weird section.
Okay, that was easy. Ampersand. Spawn. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's like in uh same as like bash basically spawns it in the background. Ampersand. All right. Oh, but it doesn't print anything. Okay, that's I don't think it's worth spending time on particularly, so I don't think we're going to be using APO as our main pro parallel programming tool. Oh my god, two more. Triangle. I don't see it. Oh, what is this thing? Okay, I don't think that's a thing. What about this one? No, I don't think that's the thing either. Hooray! We finished. Nice. Party. Awesome. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, um, yeah. if people feel um, motivated, then um, uh, I think we should, you know, start adding pros to these notebooks. Um, if any of you decides to do that, what I suggest you do is um, open an issue in the APL study repo and say, I'm working on pros for this notebook. And that way <coughs> people will know not to do the same notebook to avoid doubling up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. 
Uh, is there, what do you think, um, or have you planned out what, what you're going to work on, what we're going to work on in the next session, or are these continuing, I guess, is the first question. Um, I think my plan is to, um, yeah, stop this week, so there won't be one tomorrow. Um, and then my plan is to switch to um, some NB dev sessions. Um, cool. uh, yeah, for APL, probably come back to it after part two of the course. Um, yeah, in the meantime, if anybody's, you know, got a really good um, Anki deck that covers all the glyphs, I would love a copy of it. Um, to, so at least I don't forget what I've learned. Did you have you been kind of keeping up with adding the glyphs to your Anki deck, Isaac? Um, I do. Uh, I have a script that I think um, I run it. It will be updated. I haven't been updating it um, all the time, I mean, but it'll I can, probably need quite a bit I of editing though, because not everything's very Anki friendly. You know, it'd probably be a good starting point. Like, yeah. Particularly if you like spits out a CSV or something like that, you could open up in a spreadsheet and then you could just like delete the rows that don't make sense or combine some or something important. Yeah, right now it's, it looks for, um, I was looking, I mean, we'll see how, how consistent the structure is, but I did handle some ed cases around looking for markdown cells that are uh, at least a certain number of header, like a maybe a header three or above, and it looks for the back ticks and the text afterwards. Cool. Um, I think you've been pretty consistent with that um, scheme. So yeah, recently it's just like, there'd be a bunch of cards that aren't necessary and some that don't really stand alone and some which like have too many examples and, you know, but yeah, I mean, that would be a great, great start. We could certainly use, um, yeah, that'd be cool if you could do that. Okay, yeah, I'll work on it um, this week some. Yeah, no hurry. Otherwise, we're all going to forget everything as we're practicing. I think the, I've also got a deck of um, the keyboard shortcuts. Um, okay. I have one that was that's um, kind of a deck of the symbols um, from the um, dialog docs. So it would be useful to add the are... yeah. It'd be useful to add the mnemonics to that too, if you have time to, or anybody else has time to. Oh yeah, yeah. So otherwise, we're all just going to have to look them up. All right, gang. Well, thanks for uh, sticking with me to the end. You are the tenacious ones. And uh, yeah, anybody interested in NB Dev, probably, probably start doing the same time next week. See how things go. Awesome. Next week, Monday. Uh, Monday, US, Tuesday, Australian. Yeah. Oh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye, gang. Bye. Bye. Thank you.